Well, it's all thing all things education today as I am talking with Dr. Sid Chapman. He's been here before. He is, he is here today. He is president of the Georgia Association of Educators. Thank you for visiting Southwest Georgia. Thank you for having me again. And you you have been in your position for almost four, is it four years? Yes. And your I guess your priorities, your goals when you first took the position. Well, when we first started, you know, we were faced with a lot of challenges with the Opportunity School District and the amendment and what have you. So that was a, a big one that we uh, faced, and we defeated that mm -hmm. at the polls. And so uh, we were also going through the Great Recession and a lot of furlough days and uh, austerity cuts. And so, like, $9 billion cut out, uh, which caused... Uh, a lot of trouble when you have nine billion dollars cut out of the budget and so we have uh, uh, teachers that are uh, that were laid off and other support professionals and the school, most of the school days have come back but uh, it causes more trouble because you have all these waves. Yes. Oh, more stress, right? right exactly. All right, we'll, we'll talk about some of uh, the Georgia Association of Educators' major concerns now. Yes. Well, with the waivers that uh, came about with each district had to become um, either a waiver district or a charter district. And so class size is really one of the big ones because with all the austerity cuts and laying off teachers, they increase class size and one teacher has more teachers, uh, more students rather mm -hmm. than, than, than she had right, he or she had right. And so it really makes it difficult to uh, do the job that you need to do. So have you heard, uh, I guess, a lot of feedback from rural schools and that, of course, would be our area? Of course, rural schools are the ones that hit the hardest, you would think, uh, because uh, there's not as much funding, there's not the biggest tax base. Um, you hear all this stuff about choice. Well, you know, most school districts in the rural area only have like three or four schools, and so you really want those schools to be the very best that they can be, and, and a lot of those were on those failing lists, so-called failing lists and struggling lists mm -hmm. that uh, to need to bring that up and and so they need a lot of help from the community they need fully funding and so that's what we're fighting for now is this the community school concept that you're advocating for absolutely we believe in uh, that we can partner with the medical community because with the austerity cuts we lost a lot of counselors social workers uh, I so don't support even, yes a lot of support professionals so uh, children we, we don't really understand how many kids come to school hungry every day. They don't even have a place to live. They're very transient. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't even have a place to wash their clothes. So we're working with the community and a lot of those community uh, partnerships have brought about opportunities for washing clothes, having meals on the weekends, backpacking. Right. And during uh, the ho holidays. During the holidays, work with uh, uh, all the different institutions around. And in medical care, dental care, you just wouldn't believe. I had a teacher tell me she had a student that had five abscess teeth. I've only had one in my life and you know that was pretty bad so uh, we really got to keep working with that. And, and it sounds like you, you get feedback from the membership across the state for people who are not familiar with GAE, what, what is the organization, and, and do you, how often do you meet? Okay, well, the Georgia Association of Educators is the oldest uh, education affiliate in, in Georgia. Uh, we, we were once GEA and mm -hmm. GTEA, and we merged together and became GAE, and so uh, we're the state affiliate of the National Education Association, which is 3.2 million members across the country. And so we advocate for a great public school for every child, regardless of zip code, that's our motto. We really want great public schools and great teachers recruited, retained, and to provide the best uh, pu public education, education that we can. And speaking of recruiting and retaining good teachers, we need to talk about that on the other side of the break because I'm curious as to what is key to, to, to getting those good teachers. So stay with us, everybody. I'll talk more with Dr. Sid Chapman after the break. Well, are you interested in becoming a teacher? It's a, a tough job, and you have to have a passion for it. Uh, of course, it's always difficult for, I'm sure, any school administrator when they lose teachers, and we're understanding that, uh, I'm, first of all, talking with Dr. Sid Chapman about that very issue about losing good teachers. You said the average span is for new teachers is? It's like five years, and there's a lot of reasons for that. It's not necessarily pay, but pay helps. Everyone that goes in the teaching knows that they're not going to get rich, but mm -hmm. it's a, a, a call 
calling. It's uh, something that burns within you that you want to use your talents to go in and teach. But we, there's so much emphasis on teaching to the test. We have diminished that some with every student succeeds act and other legislation. But there's still that pressure that kids have to perform. Uh, and the teachers are held accountable held for that. accountable. And they have to download 10 pages of uh, lesson plans per class every day and uh, all these walkthroughs. And so a lot of that pressure, you know, runs teachers out. And a lot of teachers retire early now mm -hmm. that would have stayed longer. So, so, so talk about that recruitment. I mean, do you um, uh, go to college campuses? Do you uh, publish advertisements across the nation? Or do you use all of those methods? All, all of that. We're, uh, we have a team of staff members that go to the colleges of education all across the state. Uh, we have uh, support uh, groups for early educators that meet together and those that have been in the profession for a short period of time, professional development. Uh, the Mentor. Right, the mm -hmm. millennial group that's coming in and things that uh, interest them. So we're doing everything we can to keep them in the profession and recruit great teachers to stay. And once they're there, talk about that learning environment, how important that is and how difficult or tricky it might be. Well, teachers want to use their talents, their creativity. They, uh, you know, you, you don't want to stick to just teaching to a test. You want to be able to use, uh, you know, conversation. You write your own test, which they're not even able to do anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, have projects, uh, conversation, discussions. The time is so limited because everything is just bam, bam, bam. And so the stress is there with being looked over your shoulder so much. And now, that's that's really a difficult thing that they're facing. Quickly, the legislature kicks off in January. Yes. So, so are there some major issues you'll bring up? Well, we want fully funding for public schools. We've always asked for that. The QB has never been fully funded. We want the new formula to come. They keep talking about the new fun, uh, funding formula, and we want to know what that is and how it will affect all of the schools, the students. So your term ends when? Uh, this July. Okay, in so, so the, you're, in your, you're concluding your second term. What, what's coming up after okay, that? Okay, I term out and I plan to run for state school superintendent. And oh. I'd love to come back and talk to you about that. Uh, okay, so so what what makes a good school superintendent, state school superintendent? Someone who will be a great advocate for public schools and public educators and the children most of all. All right, well, good luck to you and Thank good to you. see you and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and all uh, that. Yes. Thank, Thank you for you what you so all are doing. Uh, well, today is a somber day in America. It marks one year since officers Nick Smarr and Jody Smith were shot and killed in the line of duty. It happened December 7th when the two best friends responded to a domestic dispute, uh, a call on a domestic dispute. WAOB News 10's Emily Forrester sat down with Smar and Smith's fellow officers along with their mothers. Tonight at 5, hear from the officers who responded to help their brothers in blue immediately after the shots were fired. And then one hour later at 6, how the officers' mothers are coping one year after losing their sons. We've got those stories for you, uh, as well as the latest news and weather. Log on to WAOV.com. You can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have a good afternoon.